안녕하세요. That's about it. Okay, so today I'm going to be talking about hair care trends in Asia. Um, I'm also going to be highlighting some of the key differences that these trends are going to mean for your product formulations um, over the coming years and also highlight some of the key ingredients you should be looking out for to create these types of products in the future. I'm going to be taking a look at uh, some of these key points the healthy scalp equals healthy hair concept. Uh, that is something that's very strong in Asia. Uh, it's not so strong in Western parts of the world. So it is a unique concept that you have in this, um, in this area. Uh, and it's obviously something that's very ingrained in your society and the products you currently have. So I'll be talking about that a little bit more in a moment. I'll be having a look at the general trends in styling for women and what this is going to mean for personal care product formulations moving forward. The general trends in styling for men as well and what this means for men products uh, moving forward. Then some general trend observations uh, I've seen um, especially in Korea but also for Asia in general and then some trend predictions and also talking a lot about the raw materials and the relevance they'll have for these observations and predictions moving forward. For the translators, is that speed okay? I get a bit excited sometimes, so if I start talking too fast, just slow me down. Okay, so first up, the healthy scalp equals healthy hair concept. Uh, it's all about making sure that your scalp is, is nourished and uh, obviously taken care of, reduce excess oil, things like that. That's the general concept, that's where it started. Sorry, technical difficulty. It's working just fine for me. Okay, while we're sorting out the technical difficulties, maybe I'll talk a little bit about what you're doing to your hair. Now, I had some great pictures, but obviously they're not showing at the moment. Um, some general trends that we're seeing, I'll come back to the healthy scalp concept in a moment. What we're seeing in general for women with longer hair, we are seeing soft waves, okay? Perms are back. Perms are big in Asia in general. Now, it's interesting because, oh, about 20 years ago, we were perming our hair over in the West, and we know how bad it is for our hair. You haven't realised this yet. Now, this has a major implication for the products that are going to be coming out in your market. Uh, one of the key differences with, with Asian hair in general is it is very dense. Um, it's a lot thicker. It's a lot stronger than Caucasian hair. And if you don't believe me, at the end of the presentation... I've got Caucasian hair, if you didn't notice. You can come and have a play. I honestly do not mind. It's important. Um, if you're formulating for Asian hair, it's important for you to actually know the differences. And as soon as you feel your hair, you feel my hair, you're going to feel the difference straight away. So what does this mean? Okay, it means you're used to having very strong hair. It will tolerate chemical treatments. It will tolerate perms. It will tolerate colour. It'll even tolerate a lot of heat styling, but you combine those three and that is what you're starting to do. You are going to start causing significant damage to your hair. And this is being reflected in the products we're seeing launched into the market. So you may want these beautiful soft waves uh, and these colours. You want to lighten your hair. You're doing a lot of damage to your hair when you're lightening it. Who cares about the damage? Let's just care about fashion and looking good. Okay, and that brings me to the products you need to use. You need to put a lot of hydrolyzed proteins back into the hair because you're really damaging the structure of the hair. If you picture it like a roof, 
roof tiles, okay? So when you have a really healthy roof, you've got these nice, smooth roof tiles. You start to introduce oxidative agents so that you can get colour. You want to paint your roof, okay? You have to lift the roof tiles to get the colour in under those roof tiles, change the colour. But in doing so, you end up with lifted roof tiles that never quite go back to their original position. This is damage, okay? This is exactly what's happening to your hair fibres. So if you can imagine now, instead of your roof being nice and smooth and the rain just washing off of that roof, it's not washing off of that roof anymore. It's, and, and in fact, if this hair starts to rub against itself, there's a lot of friction, a lot of extra damage gets caused. Okay, let's say we're colouring up. Now we want a permit. So we're actually going to misalign the bonding that occurs in the hair to give it so much strength. So instead of the hair fibres being aligned like this on a molecular level, we are now altering it to permit, turn straight hair to waves. And we are moving those bonds. So I have lifted roof tiles, I have moved roof tiles. Okay, so you think about this roof now. If I've got these jagged roof tiles, um, I'm not reflecting light evenly anymore. Okay, I'm, I'm, my hair's not shiny anymore because the roof tiles are damaged. They're lifted, they're moved. Some of them are even missing now. And guess what that means? It means my roof is going to start leaking. I'm going to lose moisture from that hair. Okay, so we need to put moisture back in. We need to put new roof tiles back on that roof. We need to coat it with a layer to get some shine back onto that hair. And that's exactly what you're doing when you perm and colour your hair. And then you're going to heat style it. Okay, you're going to lose more moisture. You're going to have more damage to the hair by doing this. More roof tiles missing. So how can you fix it? Oh, have we fixed this now? I'm going to flick forward, flick back. Okay, so this is some of the latest styles. And let's face it, they look great. But they're damaging their roof tiles. They're damaging their hair. Okay. Another thing you'll see in marketing, they talk about um, hair, making hair denser. Because what you're doing as well, when you're removing these roof tiles and you're affecting the structure... You are making your hair less denser in a marketing term, okay? You're going to go from having this really strong hair, strong fibres to damaged fibres that are lifted, that rub roughly against each other, cause a lot of friction, get a lot more frizz, get a lot more tangles, okay? You need that smooth roof tiles for them to slip over each other. Um, when you've got shorter hairstyles, again, colour, Colour is really big uh, and lightening. The lightening process causes a lot of damage to the hair. With shorter styles, again, because of the normal density of your hair, you do tend to have heavier hair. So putting volume back into Asian hair is very important. Also, you tend to secrete quite a bit of sebum, which is normally good and conditioning for the hair. But of course, it can leave the hair looking heavy and lank. Um, so a lot of shorter hairstyles, uh, you need to use styling agents that introduced volume to the hair to lift it. And a lot of cleansing products are used to remove excess sebum because if you remove the excess sebum, you'll naturally get more volume, more lift to the hair. Is this making sense? So styling impacts. For long hair, as I've mentioned, uh, they are minimising styling agents, but care or repair products are really, really important for this hair type. And the more that you colour and perm that hair, the more you're going to start seeing frizzy, dry hair, split ends even. Now, split ends might even be a new term for your market, again, because you've had such strong hair in the past. But when you oxidise it, when you lift those roof tiles, you start to tear things apart, okay? And that will eventually result in broken hair and frayed ends, like a frayed power cord. And again, more roughness, more damage, more friction. Um, you'll see bonding repair products already in the market. They use the claims of bonding. What are they bonding? What they're talking about to a consumer is that repair, 
okay? So never forget consumer perception when you're also formulating and marketing hair care products because consumers will understand terms like oil and they will instantly think dry hair needs oil. That's not the case. Dry hair needs conditioning agents, it needs strengthening agents, repairing agents, it needs moisture put back in, it needs roof tiles put back down, okay? But you do need to add a little bit of oil because your consumer will look at that oil and, and you might only have a tiny amount of oil in that product and again, you know, you would pick a, a natural oil, something with a great story. I see argans everywhere. We did argan five or six years ago in the West. That's old news for us. But it's also got a great story. What I'm getting at here is we've done the damage. You're now introducing the damage. You're going to see a lot of repair products. And these are the ingredients you need to put into your products to win the consumer. And the perception is that if you've got dry hair, you need oil. You don't need a lot of oil. You'll weigh your hair down. In fact, if you have, and then you might say, oh, Belinda, I've seen oily hair serums. You probably have. And they probably contain about 1% actual oil. And then they contain about 99% volatile lipid. It's a carrier. Feels beautiful when you put it on your hair. It evaporates, weightless. Don't believe me? Try it out. That's exactly how those kind of products get put together. But never forget consumer perception because consumer perception is what drives them to buy the product. So you have to have a great marketing story and they're going to look for products with this so-called oil content because they will think that is what's repairing their hair. It's not. It's the hydrolyzed proteins. It's the cationic agents. Don't forget the charge of the hair. If you coat the hair with some cationic agents, it will naturally feel smoother, but not too much, otherwise it's going to feel heavy. Uh, in this example here, the product claims to have 25 kinds of protein components. Um, you also need to boost gloss in your product, and you will get that from some of your volatile uh, compounds. Some other products um, that are really big in Asia and tell that story, that repair story. We've got curling essence here. There it is, argan. There's the story. Okay. So in this particular product, it's being marketed for people with soft waves to moisturise, protect. Argan oil is the big story. There wouldn't be much argan oil in there. But the consumer doesn't know that and the consumer's looking for that story. Never underestimate consumer perception when trying to market and sell the product. So when you're formulating a product, never uh, forget who your consumer is. They need to hear that story. You need to put those materials into your formula so your marketing department has a fantastic story to tell. Does that make sense? Yep. Um, there's a colour and perm solution here. So again, these products are coming out into the market in a big way because this is the damage that you're doing to your hair. Um, there's a silk scarf mask. You'll see also shine therapy for coloured, rebonded or permed hair. So products are coming out specifically to address the damage you're doing. And this product would be mostly, again, volatile silicones for that shine but a weightless finish. Okay, for shorter hair, bobs need volume and we're also seeing a lot of shine serums because shorter hair will tend to use heat styling apparatus. So you need to protect and repair from heat styling apparatus in shorter hair. So shine serums, again, volatile silicon based. Heat protection, this product's a heat protecting product. So it would have uh, agents in there that form a protective film to protect the hair when it's heated. Um, there's also a hair oil shine here and another shine serum. So next time you're using one of these products, read the ingredients list and you'll see it's mostly volatile silicones or volatile materials. So it's got that weightless, it gives that shine, um, but it needs to be weightless, otherwise the hair's gonna feel heavy and weighed down. Now, before I go on to men, I'll just flick back now that we've fixed the technical problems. Sorry about that. Always happens to someone, me today. Okay, so the healthy scalp concept. 
Now, the other thing that's really important in the Asian market is your formulations have developed on the sensory level to the point where if it doesn't feel good, they're just not going to reuse it. They're not going to buy it in the first place. And in fact, I've never seen so many product samples available before purchase as I see in the Asian market. So the product has to feel great. Okay, that just goes without saying. And one of the things we see for healthy scalp products is a cooling effect. Okay, goes a long way in your market to have a great smell because people always smell the product. For it to have a great feel and a cooling effect. It has this impression of healthy scalp. Here I've got an example of a shampoo marketed to be specific for um, the hair follicle. But other issues and claims that we see are about microcirculation, anti-inflammation, there's that cooling impression. Um, protection for a sensitive scalp, normalising an oily scalp. Again, remember, Asian scalps do tend to secrete more sebum. Um, so really normalising an oily scalp is cleansing for the scalp without excess sebum. pH balancing and of course anti-dandruff because your hair is so dark, dandruff stands out very easily. So again, healthy scalp, don't have those issues, healthy looking hair. No, sorry. Um, on this slide, I picked out a couple of products that tell that healthy scalp story. Um, in this particular product, it talks a lot about restoring hair density. So that's talking about rebuilding density in the hair that's so damaged from the colouring process. But it still tells the healthy scalp story. Uh, this is a scalp purifying shampoo. And over here, this is an example of a green tea hair loss solution. Now, can I give you a very big word of warning? I see over here a lot products for hair loss. You will not succeed exporting to the West with that claim. So if you were going to export your product for hair loss, it just can't go to the West. That's not allowed for a cosmetic product. Over in the West, we see claims like hair fall, reducing hair fall. They're watered down significantly and the products really don't sell as well as if you could say hair loss, but you just can't say hair loss in the West. So just a heads up, it's said over here, I've seen products with that cooling sensory, talking about delivery of actives, healthy scalp, less hair fall, less, well, hair loss over here. Um, but just be prepared, you won't be able to export successfully with that claim. It's considered quasi-therapeutic, quasi-drug, therapeutic, depending on which region you're going to. It's not cosmetic. Okay, let's flip forward to men. And can I say good on you guys? Seriously, I love that you're so matured and you're able to go out there and pick all these personal care products and you're not afraid of it. I love it. There's this whole shelf in all the stores for men's products. I'd like to see an Aussie male get that evolved. It's just not going to happen. Who's been to Australia? No? Well, now you're going to come over. Come see me. Come see what I'm talking about. Our men just don't get it, okay? And if you ever see an Aussie male, who's seen Crocodile Dundee? All right, can you imagine him using any sort of personal care? Yeah. So I say, good on you guys, okay. So, male, sty male styling. Um, in general, the biggest growth is in Asia. Um, male hair care products, it's again, a lot about volume and lift. Again, that's got a lot to do with the extra sebum, um, Asian Scalps usually secrete, so we need to combat that to get the lift. Your styles in general have that lift. Um, perming. I'm seeing a lot of perming, and I'm also seeing a lot of colour in men's hair. But men's hair is a lot shorter, so even though you're causing exactly the same sort of damage, you're cutting it off before it gets too bad a problem. Whereas us women, we like our nice long hair, and by the time we get down to the very ends of our hair, it's not looking so good. And very much healthy scalp concept, very important for men's products. So some examples of products. Um, this one here is the ultimate healthy scalp looking product. Okay, it's actually fibres to, uh, to go onto thinning hair to make it look like there's a lot more hair. And it actually does work really well. Um, it's a powder, you see this, uh, and it 
basically coats the hair. We're also seeing a lot of styling products, a lot of matte products, um, different uh, viscosity density waxes for the style to give that lift at the root. And this, this brand here, this is a great concept. You can actually see the styles that can be achieved from the different products. So there's a lot of variability, but you'll also see a lot of lift in all of these products. Okay, now on to general trend observations. Very interesting uh, in Asia, perfumes, perfume shampoo for hair. Because you want your hair to smell lovely. It's, it's a very different concept to what we've seen in the West. Over here, it's, it's a very growing trend to have perfume shampoos. Um, it brings me to another point when we start talking about materials. You need to think about a delivery method for your fragrance. And one of the things that there's a lot of at this show and already in your market is encapsulation. So you might want to think about some of your higher end perfume shampoos, perfume conditioners, having encapsulated fragrances so that you've got greater substantivity. Remember, you're washing these products off the hair. Okay, um, so if you wash off a fragrance and it's not very substantive, your hair's not going to carry a lingering fragrance. So when formulating these products, if you're speaking with a fragrance house, uh, make sure you ask for a substantive fragrance or look at a potential delivery method to help ensure more of the fragrance stays on the hair. Um, we're seeing claims of root volume. Uh, and this is all about these formulas are created to remove sebum. Uh, when you remove that excess sebum, hair has more volume. So they're very much oil cleansing shampoos, removing excess oil from the hair. Um, we're seeing a lot more heat protection treatment products, okay? Now, if you're not sure about the damage that heat styling agents do, we've got a fabulous video on our website. We actually tested heat styling materials on Caucasian and Asian hair. We have SEM images there and I also talk about my four favourite products. So at the end of this presentation, my website will appear. You can go on there, watch that video for free um, to find out favourite heat styling materials and the tests were conducted on both Caucasian and Asian hair. So you'll actually get to see how the products held up uh, under humid conditions in real world conditions. We actually did it on my hair and Hannah's hair, my assistant, she's out there. If you don't believe me, go and check her out. Um, it was really interesting for us because we are heat styling addicts and we wanted to protect our hair. And guess what? She's Korean and her hair's permed and she's about to colour it. Never learn, even when she works with me. Anyway, but this is what fashion is doing. So you need to formulate to suit fashion. This is what you need to formulate for. Okay, but anyway, watch that video. It's got some fantastic images and it shows you real world testing conditions for heat styling protection. Uh, and, and by the way, I'm an independent here. I'm not actually selling any raw materials, um, but I am a hair addict. So we tested these different products because we wanted to find something that really worked to protect our hair. So it's, it's unbiased advice in this video. Okay, uh, another example, there's a damage clinic treatment. Um, this one is all containing hydrolyzed proteins, okay, to restore the density. That's another thing, when you're talking with your consumers or your marketing department, make sure you're using terminology that they will understand, okay. You might have laughed at my little root, roof tile explanation, but if you need to use explanations like that for your consumer, that's what you need to do. Okay, but don't try and burst the bubble about the oil because they're so convinced they need oil to restore moisture to their hair. You're never going to change that. Just work with it. Okay, trust me on that one. Just like you'll never convince them that they don't need a lot of bubbles to clean their hair. Okay, I've seen companies try that. You don't actually need a lot of bubbles to clean your hair thoroughly, but you're never going to convince a consumer of that. It's a mark of quality. Just like conditioners, it's another mark of quality to see a viscous product. Now, the viscosity of the product really has nothing to do with how well it will work on your hair, but it has everything to do with what the consumer thinks the product will do when it's applied to the hair. Um, also seeing night repair products, um, masks with volatile silicones, and again, a lot about volume, so removing excess sebum. 
Uh, some other trend observations, a lot of actives from Jeju Island. Um, traditional Korean, Chinese or other traditional medicine um, extracts. Plant extracts in general, so natural is big, natural is growing very, very rapidly uh, in your market. And also natural-based surfactants. Okay, so you might say, yeah, Belinda, we know that natural's growing and we've seen these natural extracts before. What's really interesting um, with the trends we're seeing in Asia now is you have always added natural extracts and it has always been increasing, but you've still used all sorts of functional materials. Now we're seeing claims of sulfate-free, green surfactants, natural-based surfactants. So we're seeing the trend move towards more natural, naturally derived functional materials as well. And that's a big thing for your market. Um, and we're also starting to see alternatives to silicons come out. So consumers are obviously asking for sulfate-free. We're also seeing on product labels uh, in the Asian region no parabens, no sulfates, no mineral oils, no silicons, things like this. So we're seeing a nose list or a so-called harmful list. Don't go down the path. They're not harmful. Okay, you can say they're not in there. Let the consumer draw their own conclusion from the rubbish that's on the internet. But don't you as a company be saying that because it's not correct to say that. It's misleading. Um, but just remember now, formulating into the future, consumers are looking for sulfate-free in their formula and they are tending to look for silicon-free as well. But there's some product types where you really do need those volatile silicons, where you can't create the same functionality if you don't use them. Uh, also seeing a lot of egg, silk, other protein sources. Now, hydrolyzed proteins are very, very important for your products, for hair repair products, okay? Um, if you're going to use high molecular weight hydrolyzed proteins, you're going to coat the hair. If you're going to use low molecular weight proteins, you're actually going to help redensify the hair fiber. So think about what you want the product to do and also look at if the material that you're investigating is going to suit uh, wash off products or if it needs to be in a leave on application. Very important when selecting your materials, you select to suit uh, the end product, wash off or leave on. Um, you're going to see more hair masks come out. And this is because these types of products can be very viscous. They can contain a lot of those hydrolyzed proteins, um, your cationic agents, um, other moisturizing factors, and be quite uh, viscous for the impression of lasting moisture. So you'll see this one's in a tub. Uh, you'll see some of the product claims that they're making about it. Have a look at this, formulated with rosehip oil to treat naturally wavy hair. I can tell you right now, there wouldn't be a whole heap of that in there. But never underestimate the importance of formulating to appeal to your consumer market. And that's what I'm talking about. Consumer perception is there needs to be a lot of oil present to re-moisturise my hair. It's not the case, but it's important for your consumer. Uh, here's another example of a leave-in, sleep-in mask. No rinse, overnight repair. Uh, and this one, again, markets on what's not added. So you'll start to see more and more of these what's not in there, free from type claims as your market moves towards functional materials that are more natural, green, naturally derived, that type of thing. This is going to become more and more important. So if you've formulated a lot in the past with some of these so-called no good materials, you'll need to start learning about other materials that are out there to solve those formulation issues. You'll need to change them. You'll need to remove them. It's becoming more and more popular. And what's great about this show is there's heaps out on the floor for you to go and investigate. Okay, some trend predictions. Anti-pollution. You're going to see more and more products come out. It's talking about anti-dust, anti-pollution, um, repelling that from the hair, um, preventing damage occurring to the hair. Trend prediction. Now, if any market's going to do this successfully, it's going to be the Korean market. Waterless hair care products. Waterless shampoo, waterless conditioner. It still has a bit of work to be done in this area, but like I say, 
if there's a market that's going to be able to think outside the square and create some of these products, it's going to be the Korean market. So I've set you a challenge. When I come back next year, I want to see some on the shelves. Okay, guys? Okay, what's next? Ombre home kits. God forbid people are going to be doing more damage to their hair. You know the upkeep of colouring your hair that extensively? It's, it's shocking. Um, you're going to also see, again, God forbid, home perming kits. Again, the damage that consumers start to do to their hair when they start to do these home treatments, okay? Uh, you're just going to see a lot more damage happening, a lot more hair repair products needed. Um, UV protection, okay? We, we're seeing anti-pollution. We're going to see more of it. We're going to see products claiming UV protection along with colour protection. Um, scalp serums, massage, leave-in, scalp masks. Scalp masks isn't something that's been done yet. You sew into your masks and you sew into your scalp health. Not long until we see the two come together. And conditioners. So interesting, um, in, in the Asian market, products that you leave on at the end after washing off tend to be called treatment, repair, um, mask themselves. Uh, not so much a conditioner. Simple, t simple term. Um, you're going to see more of that terminology come out and then segregate. So we'll see the market split and segregate out. Mass treatments, overnight, leave in 15 minutes, wash off. Conditioners for three minutes, wash off. So we'll start to see a lot of differentiation in this particular part of the market. And we'll also see uh, hair repair products for split ends as that becomes an increasing concern. So as you start to get a lot of breakage on longer hair, you'll start to see more than just shine serums or repair products. You'll see products claiming a lot about split ends. This is not a problem you're facing a lot of at the moment, but it's going to happen as women continue to colour and style their longer hair. The longer that hair gets, the more it will fray out split ends, the more you'll need to see specific split end products come out to address that damage. Okay, that's about it from me on the trends um, presentation. Don't forget to check out that heat styling video on our website. You'll actually see some SEM images there that show the damage using a heat styling device on Caucasian and Asian hair. Okay, you'll see it firsthand. There's nothing like seeing to believe it. Then you'll see us talk about different products um, that hold curl, that hold hair straight, um, and you'll see my favourite selections there. Also, if you would like to enhance your formulation skills, a copy of the presentation or anything else, just come and say hello. We're right outside that door. So come and visit us at that booth. And if you like today, you're going to love tomorrow. I'm talking at the sensory bar at 11 o'clock. And I'm going to do half of my presentation in Korean. Oh, seriously? What was laughing? Why are you laughing? Come and see me at 11 o'clock tomorrow. And please don't laugh then because I'll be trying really hard to get it right. <laughs> um, if I get it wrong, don't tell Hannah because Hannah's been teaching me. Okay? And she's so strict. Okay, um, also I'm speaking tomorrow, uh, oh, you're going to love this one. The present and future of customization, 2 till 2.45 in here. Then on Thursday, I am doing another presentation half in Korean. Where's the laughter? I might not by then, I might be too scared. I might just totally stuff it up tomorrow. Um, also at Sensory Bar, 11 o'clock on Thursday. Um, then I'm talking 1 till 1.45 on European and Chinese cosmetic regulations. I'll be going through the information you need to compile to comply in both of those regions. And again, if you don't get enough of me by then, I'm going to close with a big bang, 2.30 till 3 o'clock, selecting pigments for wow colour cosmetic effects. That's going to be a lot of fun, going to be a lot of colour, going out with a splash at the end. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope you enjoyed this presentation and please come and visit us at our booth.